in the previous video we talked about how the spring mvc framework works and we also talked about how we can create a to do entity in spring in this video we'll talk about how we implement a get api and we'll actually start implementing our rest api the first api which we're going to actually target is the get api so uh, before we jump on to in the implementation, let's first talk about how we'll be doing it. So, uh, for a few videos for uh, the API endpoints, we will not be adding a database yet. We will only be having our database in memory uh, with uh, just objects. And later in the future, once we are done with how the controller works or how the business service works, after that, we can then uh, talk about how we can integrate a database, uh, a MySQL database into our application. So until then, we'll be having an in-memory database uh, to work with, which will actually mimic how our actual database takes place. So uh, until that, we'll just focus on the controller and the service or the business logic, which we'll be creating for our to-do list application. So in the previous video, this is where we were. We had our to-do entity and we had constructed the getters and setters and the constructor for it. In this video, we'll actually start, uh, we actually go ahead and actually start making our to-do list API. So now again, we need a new class for our controller. So go to the package and click class. This is going to be to-do controller, finish. Great. And now uh, here we need to have two methods. So the controller is basically what uh, talks to your request URL. So if you have a, a to do list.com slash uh, get all to do's, so that actually, or the slash to do's, that actually gives you all the to do list tasks. So the controller takes care of that and we'll see how that works. So let's create our method. So we have a public list of to do, and this is going to be get all. Produce. Great. So let's import the necessary functions. So here we have the list from util and we return the list of to do's whenever you ask this. Now, how do we actually map this to the URL? So as we saw in our first, uh, second video, right? How to implement RS controller here. So we have to give it RS controller annotation and also the request mapping annotation. So let's do that now. So to make this a rest controller, we have to give it a rest controller annotation. And we again import it. And to map the request with this method to slash to do's, we need to do a request mapping. And the mapping will be done to slash to do's. No, my bad. And let's import request mapping as well. Okay, great. So now we have a, a method called get all to do's and just map to slash to do's, but we need to return a list of to do's now. So how do we do that? So the one way could be to actually implement a logic right inside here. So we can just write the logic here and then return that right now. But uh, things are a bit different here. So this is a controller class. So it only deals with the controller and not the, and not the business logic or the service, uh, also called a service or logic. So the controller only takes care about how uh, the logic or how the data is actually sent back to the view, right? Which is the JSON. So we will actually have a service which actually deals with the business logic of getting all the tasks, etc., etc. So let's implement our service class, which is the to-do service. So go again, uh, let's close this and go to to-do new class and we call it to-do service. And let's create it. So this class will contain all the business logic which we have to have uh, to actually give back the controller some data. So here first we need a list of to-dos, right? So we have a private list to do called as to do's and this is going to be an array list so new 
array list and let's actually implement our array list right so this is going to be arrays dot as list and let's have a few lists here so the first thing which we have is a new object so a new to do and the id is going to be one the name is going to be task one summary is going to be summary one and description is going to be description one yes so let's just make a few more so that we got enough to work with we'll call this two and three and let's import our list great so now uh, how do we actually let spring know that this is uh, a service so how do we let spring know that similarly how when we talk about this being a rest controller we need spring to know that it's a service so that spring can do a class path scan and then understand that you know this is a service and all services are singleton so spring only creates one object of this service and then it keeps using it uh, so that net space it saves time and space so to do that we just have a service annotation and this lets spring know that this is a service great now so now we have a to do's a uh, list of to do so it has three tasks task one task two and task three so let me just fix that right now task two and task three and let's do it for this one as well, so it's going to be two and three. Great. So let's, yeah. Great. Now let's actually implement our method or the business logic. So how we do that is we do a public list to do get all clues. and we return to do so pretty simple pretty straightforward and now we have the logic here for get all to do's which just returns all the to do list objects and now we need a way for this to be injected into our controller so let's see how this works so we do a private to do service we create or instantiate a class variable so to do service and to inject all of this inside our controller we have an auto wired annotation so we'll talk about what auto wired is and what it what dependency injections are so basically the service is dependent on the controller is dependent on the service and we want to use the service inside our controller so we talk about how we use dependent injection in a later video but let's see how this works now so now that we have our to do service all we have to do is do to do service dot oh, sorry to do service dot get all to do's and we're good to go so this is how we actually get all the to do's and uh, let's run this and see how this works so we are inside to do this so and so go down to the list okay let's see how this works just run could not find to do list dot to do list okay it's right here Java application. Great. Yeah. 
So let's wait for the server to be spinning up and then we can actually test this to see if it works. So as you can see here, we have our to-do list ready. So let's go to our browser. So let's go here and let's go to port 8080. And let's see slash to-dos. So here, as you can see, we have our task one, task two, and task three. So I named it wrong, but yeah. So we have our three tasks here, and this was with the help of the method here. So if I close this and cut it out. So here we had a slash to do's and we had to do service. So let me quickly fix this. So we have two, 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 and Three, 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 and this is going to be two. And this is going to be three. Great. So this is how we actually implement a get API. And now let's actually have a get API for getting it by ID or just getting one to do list. Or so we do again a request mapping. And no, we don't want only the to do, we just want one to do, right? So we just want the ID, but the ID here is a variable, right? It's a class where variable called as ID. So to actually have variables inside your URL, we use curly braces and we put our variable name inside that. So now whenever you have an ID, one ID, two ID, three, it will be a map dash slash to do slash one slash to do slash three. Okay, so we do a public do get to do and this will have the integer id now we need spring uh, we need to tell spring boot that this id is the same as this one inside our url so for this we have an annotation called as path variable so path variable basically tells spring boot that this one, the ID here is going to be mapped to the ID in the URL. And all we have to do is do a return to do service dot get to do and pass in the ID. So we haven't implemented get to do yet. So let's do that right now. So we create a method here. Great. And all you have to do is return to do's dot convert it to a stream and then we filter the stream so the filter is going to be a lambda expression so for every to do every task we have to get the id and check it if it's equal to the id which we pass and if it is then we do find first we find the first one and we do a dot get to it oh sorry we'll find first and uh, get yeah so let's see what the error is here Types mismatch for a stream. Oh, okay. So we need to do start filter. Okay. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Okay. So stream dot filter equals id dot find first dot get. Uh, yeah. So here what we're doing is we are filtering all the to-dos, uh, getting each of them by ID. Then we compare it with the ID here and get the first one which you find. So how does the workflow look like? So we have the to-do slash ID. We have the integer which is passed into to-do.service and we get the ID. We go to the service and we filter it by the ID and check if the ID matches anything inside here and we get it back. So this is how we get one single to do using the ID.
So let's uh, run it again and see how this works. Run as Java application. Up at no time, so. Um, yep, so we have a server ready. So all you have to do is do slash one and we get the first to do now. So as you can see, we have the first to do. We go to two, we have the second one. And when we go to three, we have the third one. And if we go to just slash to do's, we have all of them here, as you can see. So this is how a get API works inside Spring Boot. And in the next video, we'll talk about how we can implement a post API. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.